Thanks everyone for coming out tonight. Um, tonight I'm going to be talking about React and Flow. Um, so raise your hands. Who has used React before? A lot of people. Awesome. So as we know, React is a great library to build UIs in a declarative fashion rapidly. What about Flow? Who here has used Flow before? Or maybe TypeScript even? Okay, so definitely less amount of hands. So Flow is a tool that does static analysis of your code and will check type annotations on your code to let you know of unexpected behavior or potential errors. So when you use Flow with React, you can find errors or unexpected behavior within your application before you ship it out to production. So let's talk about shipping to production a little bit. We all know what a successful production push looks like. No unexpected errors, no memory leaks, it's full, right? it's a great deal. All right, users are happy to get the you know, brand new code sent down to them, and it works perfectly. We also know what it means to have a bad push. You know, we run our unit test, we run automation, everything looks good, we ship. But yes, it's not behavior in the wild, right? We didn't expect anything to go bad, but users are sending in reports, getting calls. What happened, right? Everything looked okay, but our application wasn't in a good state. What usually happens is that us engineers, have to coax the application back into the correct form by looking at stack traces, debugging, and hopefully finding the issue that got us into this bad state in the first place. Overall, it's not a fun place to be. So, React and Flow are tools, right? They're an end to a means to get you know, code into users' hands. But the core idea behind using them is about removing doubt from complexity, right? React allows us to build UIs so much easier than yesterday. And then using Flow with React allows us to have an assuredness that what we're sending down to users is going to work and work well. So when used in conjunction, it's a lot better than saying, you know, I think this should be good to push. Yeah, go ahead and merge it. Just saying, hey, everything was checked with flow, our types look good, go ahead and ship it, I know it's going to work. So let's talk a little bit about known knowns versus unknown unknowns. So some of the things I mentioned earlier about shipping code, right? You might have unit tests. You know, unit tests will test the surface of a module that I've written. But that's testing known knowns. I wrote the module. I know how it operates. I know what arguments it takes, what it should return. That's easy, right? 5 plus 5 is 10. I know that. Same thing with writing documentation. I know the module works. I can write documentation above each method that says what arguments take what arguments the you know, function might take, what it returns. Again, that's a known known. That's something I can control. But what about the unknown unknowns? Something like, how does my module work with their module and then also handle asynchronicity? How do you unit test that? How does that work? Right? Those are unknown unknowns. Something that we don't really have too much control over when it comes down to us investing time into trying to make sure things work. And we can do better. And that's where Flow comes in. Flow has the ability to trace through code, through the way the code in your application works, through multiple modules, and tell you where things might break down, where things might act unexpectedly. And so with the way we build UIs with React in a declared fa uh, fashion, where components can compose other components using higher order functions, right? So a lot of different props and states flowing through different components in a top-down fashion, it can save us from a lot of headaches when we move to that type of convention of building something. So let's do a head-first dive into what flow is and how it works. So give you a motif of our furry friends, I have a log kibble function. So the log kibble function takes a pieces argument, and given the pieces argument, it will print out a log message about the length with the length property of the pieces uh, uh, argument, and it will basically state how many pieces of kibble are, of kibble are left for our furry friends. So let's say later in our application, another engineer goes ahead and decides to use a log kibble function, and they call it with an object with a kibble property that has an array of three elements. What's going to happen when that log kibble function is called with that argument? Anyone like to shout out what's going to be printed? Undefined. There are undefined pieces of kibble left. And if there's undefined pieces of kibble left, 
We don't know how much kibble we have left, and some dogs might go hungry, which we did not have happen. But what if we decided to run flow against this code? What would happen? Boom. Flow can statically infer that we are passing an object into our log kibble function, an object that does not have a length property, and therefore will have unexpected behavior of resulting in an undefined value being printed within that string. So even without adding any type annotation to doing anything, flow has already caught an error in our code before shipping that to production and making dogs go hungry. So let's say we get smart, right? Let's say we start using flow. What does flow actually look like when you use it with your code? When you start adding type annotations. So up here, we create a new type, a type alias of kibble. Kibble can be an array of containing any value of any element, numbers, string, <coughs> objects, and anything. Also, it could be a number. And you see that we have this pipe character, which represents a type union, meaning either or, simply that. It could be either an array or a number. So now our log kibble function, we annotate the argument that says pieces should be of type kibble. <coughs> so we're expecting an array or number. And the function returns a string. We can annotate what value the function will return with a type as well. So now that we know that uh, the log kibble function can uh, take an array or number, we know that we should actually check if pieces is an array, and if it is, we can return the length property. Otherwise, just return pieces, which should be a number. And then finally, we have our uh, return statement where we take the count value and return it in our log message. So later on, we can call log kibble with an array, we can call it with the raw number, and get our log messages. So let's say that someone, again, decides to just assume that 1 and 2 are going to be numbers, the variables 1 and 2 are going to be numbers, and they try to determine the weekly kibble count. So they add 1 and 2 together and multiply by 7. But remember, we're using flow, and flow will catch this. So we see that when trying to add 1 and 2 multiply it by 7, flow catches that 1 and 2 are strings, and 7 is a number, and you can't multiply a string by a number. And again, we're saved from shipping to production with bad log messages about kibble. So let's go ahead and do a case study. I have a friend named Rigby. He runs a pet shelter. He's trying to save pets. We have Snoopy in here from Charlie, that's sad. We have Garfield from John, even sadder. Right now, he's working on building a modal about sending off an inquiry form for users of the site to find out more information about a pet. He's using React to build this, and also is using Flow. So let's take a look at how he's building this modal with React and Flow. So, we have our flow type annotations over here on the left. Let's run through those really quick. So, like you saw in the modal, we have a form. So we have a type pet inquiry, which represents the values in our form. Does it have a name property, an email property, and a zip property? Name and email are both going to be of type string. Zip is going to be of type number. We also have a action sent inquiry type, which basically represents when we want to send off an inquiry object to, let's say, some other part of our system that posts it to a server or something, that's what the data should look like for that action of actually sending off the pet inquiry object. So we're going to have a type property, which is a string literal, literal send inquiry, an action, which is a pet action, something like adopt or foster, an ID, which would be a pet ID, and then finally our inquiry object, which is a type pet inquiry, referencing our pet inquiry type. Finally, we have our send inquiry type, which represents a function. And that function expects this argument to be an action send inquiry type and return void. You see our types are composing each other to build a robust definition of how our modal will work. But let's take a look at the actual React code. You see we have our flow annotation up at the top, a comment to basically make sure that flow checks this file. We then have our modal props type. And this is just like React props, prop types, similar to that. But now we can express how to do type props via flow and allows for a lot more expressivity around defining what our component is expecting. So we're expecting a send inquiry function um, that is going to be a type send inquiry and also a test that's going to be a type test. So we also can type our state as well. So let's go ahead and create our modal state which is going to be a inquiry property of type pet inquiry. So we have our props and state types. Let's go ahead and create our pet modal component. You see we also then define the properties of props and state with the types on the component. 
We have an on submit click function, which will send off our inquiry. That is a function type that returns void. So then we get into our constructor, it's an accept props called the super. And here we define our state, which we're going to start out with the empty object for the inquiry at first. And then we just define our on submit click function, which will call our send inquiry method on our props. And we have our render function that so return the modal and the form and everything. So let's run flow against this. Uh oh, looks like we hit an issue. Property email not found in object literal. That makes sense because we expect the inquiry object in our state to be a pet inquiry, and an empty object literal does not have our name, email, and zip fields. So Flow warns us about each field. So this makes sense. We don't want to be sending an empty object instead of a fully formed pet inquiry field object. So let's go ahead and fix that. So you can see that where we update modal state to have a maybe type pet inquiry. So the question mark in front of pet inquiry says that this value could either be null, undefined, or a fully formed pet inquiry. So it gives us the flexibility of not having any data or having data. So we go ahead and update this state um, to an object where inquiry is null. So when we're starting out, the modal form should be empty. We're not going to have any inquiry data. Great. So let's see what flows us now. So uh, having some errors. So now we're looking at our send inquiry method. And so we're attempting to send this state inquiry, this state inquiry, where inquiry is either null or undefined. So our send inquiry method expects to take a type of action send inquiry, but the type of action send inquiry is expecting the inquiry property to be a pet inquiry, not null or undefined. So Flo is telling us that we need to ensure that we have an actual inquiry object before calling the method. So all we have to do is check the existence of the inquiry property on state, making sure it's not null or undefined, and then we can call our send inquiry prop, uh, property method and send off the inquiry information. We run flow again, we have no errors. Say again. Those are, you, you can assume those are defined elsewhere. So we have no errors and we're good to go. And we're able to do all this without even running our code in a browser. And so this is all done statically. So we're able to find all our errors before even running our code or shipping to production and hitting headaches later on. So that's all I have. I hope that was a good, quick, succinct run through of using React and Flow.